we're back. So, uh, the next morning, uh, as usual, uh, the five of you have class to attend. Um, Yay, class. The professor will inform you. He's very uh, thankful for the work outside of class, that he's very thankful for the work that the five of you have put in. Um, but uh, you can all have take your seats. Now, every year, that every year that I've taught this class, I've had the same very important conversation about things. A lot of people might wonder, why do we continue to have people participate in groups that are not of the exact same mindset? Today we're going to talk about how groups get together and fit together, and how the system which we refer to as Alignment works. The Lord. Now, it's very important that people understand. Alignment has a purpose. It helps us identify the types of people that we are encountering every day. Why would we do something like this? Let me get the forest music off here. So we're having class outside. Now, there are lots of people out there that would say, aren't you just creating negative stereotypes? Aren't you making it so that people will look at evil people and think, there's a person who will kill me in my sleep? Don't people already think that? That's the problem. You see... In every group, it's important to have people with differing opinions. Sometimes, the right thing isn't always the right thing. Can somebody give me an example of when the right thing isn't the right thing? Uh, Niev will raise her hand. Yes, go ahead. When you accidentally cause someone else harm? Even though you're doing the right thing, you're causing harm to someone else. Hmm. Like, give me a, give me, give the example a little bit better. Uh, well, I was thinking specifically of when I, uh, disclosed about a certain person finishing someone else's homework, even though technically it was the right thing to do perhaps it was not the right thing because it caused the other person to get a bad grade exactly sometimes doing something for what could be a good reason isn't necessarily good for everyone i have one yes i read about this fellow that possessed these magical gems and it allowed him to destroy half the universe in order that the other half of the universe may propagate now that seems like based on his logic it's a good action but in reality, it's still mass murder. Yes, of course. And also, it's not enough people. Huh. Well, I don't know that that story sounds reasonable. I, I would probably interest you in better books if they're giving out stories like that. Okay. That man must have been out for some sort of vengeance. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, had weird tastes in gauntlets. These kinds of things are why sometimes we look to people who exist both outside of the spectrum and what many would call on the wrong side of the spectrum. I am a firm believer in there being no wrong side, however. The difference between a good person and an evil person is something that often can get very, very confused very quickly. For example, an evil person can start an orphanage for his own personal benefit. Whereas a good person might think that ridding the world of a specific problem 
will somehow do humanity better. But how does, how do creatures learn in their lives? Well, Very good. If we don't have things to encounter, to overcome and to learn from, then we'll forget about them. And if they reappear, we'll fall victim to them once again. In our case, sometimes history can quite literally repeat itself. It is a commonly known thing much, much time ago. Uh, it is a common recurring cycle that Shashat has helped us recognize. The idea of lycanthropy. Is anyone familiar with lycanthropy? Uh, knowledge nature? Yeah. You can give me, people can give me knowledge natures. What is that clicking? It's me, sorry. Um, so Constag, you're sort of familiar with the idea of lycanthropy? Um, it's like this running disease thing that dies off every once in a while and then comes back. Um, there's always like some enclave of, of creatures who suddenly come down with a condition where like biting uh, other creatures will transfer on the disease. Um, but over time, like eventually these enclaves get found out, they get cleaned out. Um, and then lycanthropy kind of falls dormant. People start forgetting about it again. Um, usually it's some kind of, it's some kind of like disease that is some sort of, it creates like a hybridization of, of human, uh, and animal. Are you going to reply to the teacher or just hold on to that information for yourself? Uh, yes, Constog. Uh, it's sort of a disease which uh, causes a hybridization of humans and animals. Very good, very good, yes. So, this has been a long-running problem for our society. Um, we're not exactly sure how it gets started. Um, we have a big problem with people cleaning up the problem before we can really research into it. Um, recently I've heard tale that, uh, over the sea, uh, there is some sort of acceptance of a group of these types into society, uh, but those sound much like rumors. Uh, certainly can't be truth. But this is something that on a regular basis we have forgotten about as a society and then been overwhelmed by it, uh, and then fought it to its end. And then only to later have the same cycle happen. As I said, it is only recently that we have, through Shashat's great wisdom, kept better record of what we have on these creatures. Things like this serve as perpetual reminders that what is more important for us is to focus on maintaining an understanding of how different groups can help us better understand something. Good people are not necessarily all about knocking out and dissecting living things. Many of them are going to fight for the rights of, of these creatures, uh, giving them homes. Uh, but other good people might argue that these creatures should die. That they should be put to the death because they are dangerous and there is nothing we can gain by leaving them alive except potential accidents. Evil people might wish to keep them alive for their own long-term purposes. Each of them has information that is useful and their ability to communicate and exchange ideas leads to more rational solutions. This is where we have grown understanding of these things through the understanding of when we need to take time to keep information public. And as much as sometimes Shashat, the followers of Shashat may disagree, when information should be kept until it is fully understood. 
Um, he goes on a little bit more in detail about like the importance of of party cohesion and, and getting to understand like what alignments are, um, how having the right variety, but not too great a variety in your alignments can help you accomplish your goals better without getting you off track. But it can result in sort of narrowed thinking. Um, and he like implores groups that as they set off, um, to think, to try to think outside of what their instinct is, and try to think how someone else might think. Um, for your assignment, I would like each of you to choose one of your party members, and I would like you to research alignments and try to identify what their alignment is and what you believe your own to be. You will then present your findings uh, to me, just in paper. And I will let you know the result of the, the result of your tests. Your assignments, rather. My apologies. Any questions from anyone? Does he have the actual alignments, like, listed? Or does he have, like, additional alignments that aren't yeah, in the normal Pathfinder say. system? I am I am aware of the alignments. Uh, you'll see I have a chart that I will be that I will hand out to each of you, um, and he will give you each of the each of you this little nine box chart um, with on the top left lawful good, on the bottom right chaotic evil, on the top right chaotic good, and in the bottom left chaotic or lawful uh, lawful evil. Um, with neutral along the middle axes. So, oh, 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 see, um, alignment used to be you couldn't actually talk about it in the meta sense. I know. It's it's almost like it's almost Candle like something's school. bleeding in. <laughs> All right. Well, who wants to pair up to dis discuss alignment? I love a good philosophical debate. Who's huh. who's worked together before on a project? Obviously, me and Trent have worked together before twice now. That's gone well. It's gone well. Got my first half like that, so. Well, all of you can choose the same person. You don't have to pair off. You don't have to choose specifically. You could all choose the exact same person in the group. Except for one of you would okay, have to choose Trent. the opposite. Okay. Yeah, I think we should all choose Trent. And then follow him around and do whatever he wants us to do. And I'm going to go with chaotic neutral for Trent. Paper done. <laughs> You're going to have to provide reasons. And explain and why you write, believe it. I'm just going to write, when asked about the assignment, Trent wrote the following phrase. And then I'm going to transcribe exactly what Trent wrote. I don't know. I talked about getting his carriage aligned. No, oh, nice. Um, I don't know. Let's highlight a, a non, a non. I don't want to say forthcoming, non vocal, because I don't mean that in any kind of, uh, you know, not uh, as outgoing, more introspective party member. We can either do I mean, Nikolai Comstock. or Comstock <laughs> or uh, I now want to call the character Doki Doki because that's what's on there. Oh, you uh, mean, um, Niev. 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 Uh, because there's a lot of Erasmus and Trent time, let's be honest. Uh, so let's, uh, as scintillating as Tom and myself are, uh... I think we should, uh, cover Comstock. I think Thanks. watching, uh, I think watching Comstock's player squirm Con is perhaps Stag. the best reason. Comstock. Con I don't know. Not a part I of firearm. I at work named Comstock, so it, it's screwing me up. Do we just have to choose one of our group? I thought we each had to like kind of choose someone in the group. Each of you kill. just chooses someone in the group. You don't all have to choose the same person. You don't all oh, have to okay. choose different people. I mean, I like the idea of choosing one person because then I can just copy the paper.
But yeah. So is everyone going to choose the same person? Are people going to choose different people? Oh, shit. Well, I'm saying everyone should choose me, like like I had said, but I'll, in general, just try and copy down what everyone else is doing um, to keep the lowest amount of work possible for myself. I'm I'm good with us choosing one person. Yeah, we got water coming in. Oh no. Uh -oh. That's not good. If it's not a little bit, it's water. That's really not good. Because he's in the basement. Uh, I think I would choose Miav to write about. Are we allowed to ask the person how they think they identify, or is that not allowed? Sure. Uh, but most of you will need to have some semblance of understanding, or at least some semblance of your own perception yeah, uh, of how yeah, alignment how works. I don't know if it's in the slope or the... Uh... The library. So should we go to the library and do some research on alignment? Sure. Uh, I want to make sure Charles is all right, though. Sorry, we're having leakage issues here. What did I I'm miss? Sorry. It's rough. Um, we're going to go to the library to do research on alignments, and then we're allowed to ask um, whoever we're writing about what they think about themselves. Okay. So we're going to our specific study hall, study room? To the library. All right. So alignment is a very different concept um, as you look through, uh, as you look through the library. There are not a lot of books on alignment. It's a sort of relatively young studied concept. Um, for many years, there have been spells that kind of detect the sway of one person in their proximity to law or the distaste for law uh, versus someone who is doing morally good things versus ethically wrong things. Um, but books get very gray on this as they try to sort of nail down what these things mean. Um, from a general sense... Um, the ideas of good um, tend to be reflected um, in things like self-sacrifice, um, taking meaningful action uh, for, the, for others, not just oneself, um, protecting uh, things in, out, of, out of one's own internal drive to protect something. Um, Books indicate, though, that that's not important. So exciting night on the channel. Okay. Um. Do you mean? Do you need me to meet you, Charles? Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, okay. So. You got it. Um, what's talked about though is that deeds don't necessarily make or break a person um, alignment based on what is seen by um, the arcane and divine world seem to exist even beyond that they seem to lie in intent um, so doing the right thing does not implicitly make you a good person it is about what deeply drives you to, to that desire. Um, but there is some layer they've noticed of action having an effect. Um, so some of the examples they give are, there are many people out there that claim they are paladins, that they are warriors of, of holiness and honor and good, yet they spend a great deal of their life senselessly killing evil people and that doesn't make them morally good it doesn't even truly make them paladins um their desire is to cleanse a group from the world regardless of how you look at it that's genocide and genocide is not 
a morally good thing. Theoretically. The more you read these books, the more it can get confusing, though. Um, a system which identifies something based on what each book seems to kind of refer back to itself doesn't have factual basis. It's almost as if there's some outside observers or outside observer that determines what the alignment of something is based on something. Um, at its core, though, uh, all the books seem to agree that taking actions which better others for without without having personal motivations do cause you to appear more chronically as good taking actions which which are entirely about oneself or significantly about oneself uh, tend to reflect evil um looking for a semblance of organization in society and being willing to subject yourselves to that organized system um whether or not you believe it to be faulty or not uh pulls you towards the concept of law um but wishing for freedom of ideas and concepts um and having things be on a case-by-case -case basis for determination of results seems to push you towards chaos with the neutrals kind of being a gray area for each of these groups that doesn't seem to have like a cutoff point in any one given direction so with that um, there are some suggestions within the books for kind of, uh, tests you can, you can perform on people by asking them specific questions, excuse me, specific questions to see where they might fall. But, um, many of the questions that are in here, they all acknowledge, like, uh, it really comes down to seemingly the society you live in. Um, and the type of person that you are as you ask them, um, and the type of person they are when they answer them, and how honest they are about answering them. That doesn't seem super helpful in the end. <laughs> um, we would sounds very try. subjective. Each of these books is written by someone who simply refers to themselves as Savant. So, do we want to, like, maybe ask each other these questions and see what we come up with? Well, we don't need to ask all of ourselves the questions. Like, we, we can just do it one person. I mean... We would have to do at least two. Well, I guess for one, we'll have to ask uh, Trent these questions. Why? Isn't Trent one of the people we're going to? Uh, we were going to. No, yep. I think we should do you, and Trent can. And then you can do Trent, I guess, if you want. But. Um. I think for right now, though, we should probably wrap up early. Okay. Um. We mostly do not have Charles, and I'd rather him not be stressing about both of these things. Um, I am rather tired. I know Whitney is also rather tired. What um, are you talking about? I'm not totally exhausted. So I do apologize for calling it a little short, uh, but I think that would be better for everybody. Absolutely. I um, agree. So in terms of XP, uh, let's see here. Sorry about this, guys. It's Sorry, coming in. Uh, oh, that's, that's all right, Charles. I'm gonna hand out XP, and we're gonna we're gonna wrap up early. Yeah, you gotta take care of yourself, your real life situation first, Charles. Um, everybody can go ahead and take um, 
275 XP. Thanks. You're welcome. Don't forget to add 15 gold to your character sheets too for the for the two things we turned in. Already did. Yep. Um, and we will be back on Wednesday for Clinical Thurgy uh, as the party prepares to check out what's in this dwarven town. <laughs> and get what's his face out of jail. Yeah. Hope to see you guys then. Good night. Bye.